This is Twit. Um, I'm wondering uh, about, you know, old languages, for example, that are uh, no longer taught or much known. Um, I'm thinking of people who wrote in APL or Fortran, but much loved languages like Lisp, which is still around, but and everybody nods toward Lisp, but they don't use it much. So, and I'm wondering if you're if you even go back in time and say, like, what can I recover from that stuff? So I'm just curious about it. Yeah, it, it's, it's, you know, that's an interesting question. I wonder if you know how many programming languages are around, you know, because that was an interesting question we had at the beginning. I mean, uh, once you build an archive, the size of software heritage, of course, the natural question is how can I use it in an interesting way? So I would, I should be able to search a software which was written in a particular programming language or should I, I should be able to rebuild the compilers for a, a forgotten programming language. The first question was, how many programming languages? Well, not if you know, but uh, there are only 7,000 and something uh, natural languages, human languages, including languages nobody speaks uh, anymore. Okay? But there are over 8,000 different programming languages. And there, there is a whole community of researchers uh, that, that actually is very fond of doing this kind of work. They have a taxonomy of programming languages, over 8,000 programming languages. And so one big challenge now that we are building this gigantic archive is actually to identify each and every them, one of them, all the variants in the contents which are in the archive. But this is actually research. We are not ready to do it yet. I mean, in, in modern software development platform, I mean, if you go to GitHub or Bitbucket or GitLab, you see uh, the different uh, checkbox that allows you to look for programs in Java or in JavaScript or in Python or in C or C++. But they just recognize a few hundreds of them. What about the other thousand? Because many of them are kind of lost. So, yeah, one of the points is actually to go and find all of them. So that, that does raise the question on for software heritage of um, are you also taking any steps to preserve the, the execution environments and runtimes and tool chains for these software systems that you're recording uh, so that it's going to be possible for uh, uh, researchers in uh, 500 years to be able to uh, uh, manipulate the code that's in software heritage? Yeah, that's, that's a very important point. I mean, th let me give you a short answer. The short answer is no, we are not taking care of executable at all. Uh, but let me explain. Yes, executable are extremely important, but maintaining executable in, a, in a running in a system over time, this is an extremely complicated issue. You have many, many different approaches around, you know, for example, Docker images, virtual machines, uh, emulators, uh, tons of different approaches all around. And a lot of people are already doing that work. So instead of trying to, to maintain the executable ourselves or the environment ourselves, what we want to do is partnering with this other initiative to make sure that then it will be possible some moment in time to tell you, look, this particular source code, which is archived in software editors, can be compiled using this compiler and linked to, with this uh, library, uh, which can also be compiled. I mean, you can loop it around pretty, pretty well. On that particular machine, which is a virtual machine or a, or a lightweight container or whatever new technology will come out, I mean, or an emulator at some moment in time. I mean, these links. So the mission of software heritage is just the source code, not because other things are not important, but because software source code was the only thing nobody was taking care of before, and it, which was kind of a surprise five years ago when we decided to start this initiative, which is, by the way, not my initiative alone. I mean, there are many incredible people like Stefan Zakiroli, Jean-Francois Bramatic, and many others that are, are on board on this uh, mission. And, and for example, if you like uh, geeky technology, for example, what I really would like to see is a generalization of tools that allows you to actually rebuild your binaries from scratch, starting from all the source code components. So you have a full description of the 
declarative full description of the system you want to build, mm -hmm. and you can reproduce it from scratch from the source code. There are examples of these things, like for example, tools like uh, Geeks or Nix, N I X, uh, which are uh, being developed and deployed today. They are not yet very, I mean, diffused, but we already have established connection with them such a way that if they keep these declarative recipes that allow you to rebuild the binaries, and they can make sure the software source code from which they rebuild the binary is available by coming to software editors. See, so we are part of a bigger puzzle, and we hope this collaboration will be uh, 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 growing in the future. There will be more interconnection with these uh, other initiatives. Right. 